Welcome back to the platform of Royal Phoenix Rising. Cobalt is well with everyone. I'd like to give honor and gratitude to my ancestors, my spirit guides, the creator, in the cosmos for all that they have done in favor of my children and life. And I want to give gratitude for allowing me to be a living testament. I hope you are in perfect health and spirit, baby. I ain't feeling this shit. It's so beautiful. One second. This shit is so beautiful, okay? We are entering a new season. Season of miracles and new opportunities and, you know, doors that you never thought would open. You know, will be, will be, will ever, you know, open to you. You know, now beginning to open up for you. You know, it's a, it's a lot of transformation going on. Positive transformation for those who have, who are, you know, who have been doing the inner work. You understand what I'm saying? So for those of you who have been doing the inner work, the black sheep, you know, what I'm saying the ambassadors of the, of your blood of the bloodlines. You know, I salute to you. This is our time. All right, this is definitely our time. It is definitely a beautiful season for those who are, you know, who are righteous. You know, this is a season of um, the timelines are now balancing out. The karmic timelines are now balancing out. So now we're, um, we're entering a great season, you know, miracles, abundance, prosperity, love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whew. So today we're going to start by doing something. You know, we're going to start something very, um, very. We're going to start something different because I realized in some of my other. Oh boy, here we go. One moment. That's better. Okay. I apologize about that. So, um, today we're gonna start. We're gonna start something. You know, a bit different. Okay. Um, I've noticed in my other videos how I, you know, first of all, I forgot. Look, it is so much to be shared and said that a lot of times you all want to see me backtrack until you like. Let's say. I gave a brief explanation of how my childhood was, but there will be a lot of backtracking to fill in the blanks, okay? What's been happening, what was going on in between those time periods, you know what I'm saying? In, in between the um, the period of, that I didn't mention. <laughs> so one thing I forgot to mention, during my childhood, was my shortcomings okay growing up my shortcomings let's say like from the age of uh nine nine until the age of 15. yeah i had sticky fingers i was a thief and when I say that I was, I was, um, I was a thief. I would um, steal people money and things as such because I didn't have, you know, I was unfortunate and I didn't have, so I would, you know, steal other people's things. And I was very calculated too. I was very calculated. But some want to be so, so that's how I was so, um, intelligent as well you know i was very calculated i was very intelligent and also manipulated and like deceiving as well because i had those innocent look you know i had innocent appearance i had innocent appearance so um i will play on that you know what i'm saying manipulate people feelings and things as such like i i would sell 
my parents used to make um, some body clean, uh, colon cleanse for the body, and I would use that as an excuse um, to steal people's um, finances and funds. You know, I would enter their house. I would know what time they're gone. I would know everything. So I would go into their house pretending like, you know, I'm there to sell them, you know, specific items, and I would go in their house and just steal their, their, their funds. Um, another thing that I would do, one of my shortcomings during my childhood was that I was very um, vengeful. I know I didn't feel it's like every time that um, someone would do something to me, you know, and I would backlash, like I would um, defend myself or something as such, I would get in trouble. So there was never any justice in my situations, and I took it upon myself to, you know, um, to seek revenge because I wouldn't get justice. So that's another thing. Now the vengefulness really stuck. That that I that stuck with me throughout my lifetime until until my last awakening, really. You know when I um it turned. It's like I I switched from being vengeful to being um to wanting justice. Um, throughout my process of um, you know throughout the years, I've been uh, well after my second awakening. You know, that's when I decided, well, not my second awakening, but, you know, once I decided, once I decided to change my life and to trans, transfer, transform my lifestyle is when I began to be just and fair to other people. You understand? And I took that very serious. You know what I'm saying? Being fair to other people. However, I was still vengeful. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I was fair and just, but I, I still was vengeful. It's like, you cannot hurt me and think you're gonna get away with it. I was just that type of person. So, not, and I know that, you know, it's not, it wasn't the right thing to do. I'm sorry, look. Let me tell y'all what just happened behind the scenes because you see me drinking a lot, I'm so, I'm so thirsty. I've been preparing this look for two hours literally so by the time i finished like i wanted to drink water and i wanted to do this and i want to do that it's like no i cannot stop i need to hurry i need to you know hurry so that i can have enough time to say what i need to say and then you know start dinner and go pick up my kids it's just a lot you know so it's like i'm finally now that i finally got a chance to sit down I'm just like so thirsty, so that's why I used to continue to go back to my um, juice, my drink. So, <clears throat> I apologize about that. So, I wasn't, um, I wasn't, as I mentioned a lot of times, I was not perfect, you understand? But a lot of things I've grown and realized that I was doing wrong and then I made the necessary changes to change those attri those attri those attributes about myself. You understand? Like, even growing up with me being, I was cold. I was cold because I was, be I was cold due to not only the environment and it's always, it always felt as if I was on a battleground, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not battleground, battlefield. But, I was cold because, um, you know, uh, uh, I was just experiencing a lot, you know, at home, really. So, I was an empath, right? But it's like that part was being ripped away, like slowly being stripped away from me. That 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 part where I feel for people, you know what I'm saying? It just uh, it began to strip away, be, began to be um, st um, stripped away from me as I got older and as I um, experienced more trauma and more abuse, right? So at first, I was an empath, you know, and what was done to me caused me to be narcissist. So I had a period in my life where I was a narcissist. Very, very, very manipulative. Um, <laughs> I can't 
the word out. Very manipulative. Manipulative. Okay? So I was very manipulative. <coughs> I played on people's emotions. Like, exactly what was done to me throughout my relationships in my lifetime is what I've done to other people. You understand? And I can never put my finger on it. Like, why do I always attract these people? And it's because not only am I paying for that karma, but a part of me that I was attracting those type of relationships because that part of me still existed. You know, and that part of me would come out whenever, you know, time would, um, not time, but whenever that, whenever I felt I didn't have a choice in situations, you know, I would definitely be manipulative. So, it's like I mastered. When I say the master manipulate, okay, <laughs> the number one award goes to master manipulator, uh, manipulator, manipulator. Master manipulator. Anyway, the 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 award goes to you know drum roll. My ex husband had that shit good. He had that shit good. He was very 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 manipulative and calculating. Very calculated, knew how to play on people's emotions and things as such. So growing up, I, that was me. So when I met him, it's like meeting these people caused me to see the the what I need to purge from because they were nothing but aspect of my shadow side, my shadow self. So once I began to oh. We'll get to that, but once I had my ultimate awakening, which I talk about often, but don't really get into details about, but once I had my ultimate awakening, which was in September after my divorce, um, that's when I began to, you know, realize a lot about myself and a lot that has been trans um, transpiring throughout my lifetime that I, I didn't really take notice to, you know, take notice of, you know what I'm saying? So, with... Um, okay, so, okay, I, talk, I talked about that. We talked about transformation. I went from being manipulated, manipulated, manipulative to very just. When I say I was so committed to being just, well, no. I was just, I was very just, but anyone who ever done anything to me, you're going to get it back. That was my justice. So that actually did. That was another. That was another one of my shortcomings after I made that transition in 2011. Vengeance. That still stuck with me. Now I didn't really purge from that 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 shadow side until my ultimate awakening in September. It's like when I really began to. No, even then. It really, it, it was this year, honestly, this year. It's like, it was It was always, with myself, it was always tip that. <laughs> tip that. You give me, I get you. You understand? So, once I began to understand karma and how karma works and things as such, it's like, I don't even have to do, you know, I don't have to do that anymore. I, have, I don't have to be that person anymore because... There's a such thing as karmic justice, you know. So I wholeheartedly believe in karmic justice. So that transition I literally made this particular year, you know. And I'm very proud of myself. You understand? I'm very proud of myself. But what I was getting to then was 2011 when I had my ultimate awakening and I decided to change my life. Uh, not my ultimate awakening, but my first awakening, I, change, I decided to change my life. Is when I just began to be fair to people. Like, fair. 
I wasn't, well, then I was much older. I stopped stealing when I was younger, much younger, probably like 16. I stopped stealing. So as I got an older, you know, my, um, as I got an older, that, you know, that faded away. I began to practice just, you know, being just and fair to other people because it's the right thing to do. I began to do the right thing. In spite of who's looking, who's not, I ain't care about all of that. All I know is that I am doing what is right because it is the right thing to do. So I didn't try to impress people or anything like as such. A lot of things that I've done behind the scenes for people in general, you know what I'm saying? People will never know about. But I've done these things because it was fair. A lot of fights I've walked away from because it was fair to myself. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of things wasn't worth it. So a lot of battles and things as such, I would walk away. Even being treated the way I was treated, I took a lot of shit from people. Because I decided to be just. You understand? So by me deciding to be just, be, deciding to be just and fair, a lot of people took advantage of that. I, I gave and gave all that I can, although I've never had pretty much of anything. But people would still come into my life and take, take, take. Come into my home. When I first moved into my particular home, my current home, my home was laid out. You hear me? I had just gotten, um, my children and I had just come from, um, from the women's shelter. One month later, we got a grant of a certain amount of money. And I was able to purchase the, the nicest furniture. My home was so beautiful. But over the years, over time, I've allowed people to come into my house. This person, it's like the energy. It's the energy. It has nothing to do with age. It's that energy. I had no business allowing that energy into my home. You understand? So it's a, it has a lot to do with, 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 it's not even the person. It's like the energy that they carry. I will allow these grown adults into my home, you know, to have a nice evening and things that such. Because my house was laid. My house was laid. I will invite people over. I would do so much. I would cook dinner for people. We'll have a dinner. You know, we sit, laugh, listen to music. People want to break things. You know what I'm saying? It's like you can't hold a glass. You gotta, how you break, how you this grown and you breaking a glass? You know, it's just like that energy. It was a lot of clumsiness. You know what I'm saying? My couch, the leather on my couches start peeling off over time. One by one, dishes breaking because people can't be, people aren't responsible. I watched my home be stripped away from me due to allowing the wrong company in my home, including family. People coming, taking, using, breaking. Like, damn. It was that energy. And my house is naked. <laughs> well, now my house is naked. Yeah. Last year, I just thrown away my couch. But anyway. But in the end, you know, I, I got rid of a lot of a lot of things. We're we we're, we're not about to be here much longer anyway, so you know, I just been getting a lot of weight, a lot of things. But anyway, my house is um naked. And my home been naked for a long time. But you know what? A part of me actually felt good about it because like I was able to get that energy about my house. Especially when I got rid of the, the television stand and all that shit. I felt so much more at peace. Like, damn, I should I should have done this a long time ago. Me, I'm the type of person, I don't need a lot. I don't need a lot. I don't like to feel cluttered. I don't like a lot of things being just, I don't like a lot of things. 
So now that my home is like, it's so much space, I'm at peace. You know what I'm saying? I'm at peace. People will come, come and, and be like, oh my God, like how do you, you know, how are you um, comfortable like this? And it's like, uh, I made a conscious decision to do so. <laughs> I don't need things to be happy. That's just who I am. The smallest thing, the smallest things in life, to me, is what matters the most. The small things. I appreciate the small. And then me, you know, um, coming into this awareness, this spiritual awareness, it allowed me to see things a lot much more different. You understand? But everything my everything in my house was, was tor torn up. Especially when I went to prison. Let me see, I was here for like two months. We last, well, 2017 is when we moved here. So I lived here for like, no, not two months, like four months. And my house was brand new, new, new. Then I got arrested. I won't speak about that. Self-defense. I stabbed my children's father. I do not regret it. And I'll explain why. So, um, I, um, I lived here a couple of months. Then I got arrested for two months. After those two months, I moved, I was living with at my parents' house on house arrest. I had to live there on house arrest. So when I got home, my house was a mess. I was pissed off. I, I was pissed off. There was mildew around my sink. Like, because when I moved into my home, it was a home. It was a home. It was clean. It was new. So I got home. I see my leather being off my couches, mold in my on my uh, sink, and I have and I suffer from OCD. It's not as bad as it was before. My china cabinet, one mirror broke. Well, one glass on one side broke, broken. My TV stand broken. I was so hurt, I cried. I spent money on that, all the money I had. And that was my chance to live comfortable with my babies, just me and my babies. But I messed up by allowing the wrong company to enter my home, destroying what I was building. Okay, so we are moving forward. <coughs> so we're moving forward. I did not mention my childhood memories, my best childhood memories. I said, you know, ah, every time I felt happy, there was always this part of me. But once I felt, when I really felt, when I felt most fulfilling, is when I would play sports, when I would dance, and when I would play the piano. Music was my everything. Dance was my, dancing was my everything. And sports, I loved sports. Mm -hmm. So those were three major things that, you know, I would be, I would feel fulfilling, you know. In my family, we all played an instrument. I chose the piano. Me playing the piano is from my past life. You know, me having me having the ability to play piano is from my past life, all right? So, I play, I don't, I don't read notes, I never understood, you know, but there were times throughout my childhood when we were taught lessons. You understand, piano lessons. And I never could catch on to the notes. Like, to this very day, I don't read notes. 
I don't read piano notes. No. No, what's that? What I do? I play by ear. The reason why I'm able to play by ear is because I, I was uh, into music my past lifetime. I played the piano and I, I did everything I'm doing now in my past lifetime, I've done as well. But, um, so that's why I'm able to, you know, I can listen to music like this song here. I can, I can listen and I can play that on the piano, but I cannot read the notes and no. Okay. So we're moving forward. I did not mention I had terrible aban abandonment issues from childhood that was, you know, all tied to, um, first of all, everything that was, everything that I was experiencing was intentional so that I be broken down so that I don't become who I am so that I do not step into my power or step into my calling so that I do not make it this far. Everything that has been done to me was done intentionally. I was first, the first people who abandoned me was my parents. And anyone from there who tried to be close to me or tried to have some type of relationship throughout my lifetime, my mom would distance them away from me as I mentioned in one of my videos. So a lot of times, as I got older, I, I, that destroyed me. That destroyed me. I almost thought something was wrong with myself. You know, I used to think that something was wrong with myself. Like what, but I was so hurt. It's like, why people always leave me? You understand? And that is just, it happened every time, every time, every relationship. And it would be the worst heartbreaks. When I say when it comes to relationship and I've experienced the worst heartbreaks, I've experienced the worst. Acid being poured on your heart, that type of shit. Do you know how, how, oh my God, how painful that feels? To have acid being poured on your heart or your skin. It was that. And every time someone close to me would leave, I would just have this soul cry. Just cry out from my soul. I didn't understand it. I did not understand it. But although all of this was happening to me, I was learning to be, to stand alone. Although I've been alone my entire life, but I was really learning to, to be alone. And how to manage, you know, people coming and going. You know, no one, no, I had to learn. No one's gonna stay. So whenever I meet someone, here's that manipulate that manipulation that I that I'm telling you about. That shortcoming. When I would meet someone, it got to a point where as in I already know, I already knew that these people would leave me. So in order for me to feel better about the situation or to take control of the situation, I would leave them before they leave me. Like I can feel when it's coming to an end and then I'm going to break it off. And by me doing so, it allowed me to cope better. Although that coping mechanism wasn't really healthy. But these were toxic people who were just drawn to me due to my shadow side not being addressed. Not, by, not, not being addressed you know, and it was a cycle. It was just an ongoing cycle. Meeting people, break it. I got to break your heart before you break mine. It's like when I feel that, it's like we start off good, be a lovey-dovey relationship. But towards the end, when I sense something is about to happen, or I sense someone's about to leave, I'm definitely, I'm going to pull the plug. And that's how I was. 
So, we are now in 30 minutes, okay? <coughs> I did not try to talk that much about, I was just filling in the blanks because I, I realized how it was so much that I did not mention. You know, so I was trying to fill in the blank. Okay, so now we're moving forward. In the last video, it ended with me speaking about the um my second ultimate awakening. Two thousand thirteen, I got kicked out of home. Due to an argument my parents and I, my mother and I had, I felt disrespected. They wanted me to apologize. I did. I refused. I got kicked out of home. Spent three nights in the village at one of my friend's houses, one of my classmates. From there, I called one of my brothers, asked him if I could live with him. They all took my mother's side. You always doing X, Y, and Z to go back home and, you know, things as such. Finally, he allowed me to come, you know. And when I was on my way to Natanya, which is three hours away from um, the, uh, um, Demona, which is the, the city that I was living, currently living as well. So, my, um, my brother, he allowed me, he said I can stay with him. At the time, he was living with my other oldest brother another oldest brother they're two years apart i don't uh, okay i'm from 20 I'm, I'm 27 okay he's about 30. my old the oldest was 30 that was living there was 30 i mean no he's 30 now is what i'm saying and i'm 27 so my other brother's 29. well he's 31 anyway who cares <laughs> Who cares now? It's, it's, it's eight of them. <laughs> eight of those people with ages and names and shit. Shit, I can barely remember my kids' ages. <laughs> eight of them? Nine, nine siblings? <laughs> Come on now. <coughs> um, so, yeah. Anyway, I, that, 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 what I just mentioned are their current ages. But then I don't you know, remember. I specifically. How old was I? I don't really get the number. Um, uh, wait, one second. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay. So when I was on my way to my brother's house, my sister told my brother, my oldest sister who was living with her family in the same town, tells my brothers that she's not gonna allow them to lecture me how I can come live with her. Unbeknownst to me, she had plans to get revenge for a situation that occurred weeks prior on Facebook. The situation that occurred on Facebook was that, first of all, they're always throwing shade at me. They've always thrown shade at me. Even in public, this particular person, my older sister, not even in public, but, you know, like, she would just talk, gossip about me with her friends or with people in the community. You know what I'm saying? That's how she made her friends. Gossip. So, and she would, she would throw dirt, dirt on my name a lot as well, as I was getting older. Now, she, like, as I mentioned, she's jealous of me, still jealous of me. Nothing changes. Nothing will ever change, you know, um... That is who she is. That's her energy. I understand that, and I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I keep my distance. Anybody got time for that? So, um, the situation that occurred on Facebook, she posted a, a subliminal post about sisterhood. You know, if you like your sister, share, um, share and tag her name. So she shared a post and tagged my sister, my youngest sister, and said, I love my sister, X, Y, and Z, and specifically pointed her out. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's some shade. You know, so I said what I said, you know, I, I, I threw heat, you know what I'm saying? 
And she couldn't like when I throw heat, baby, you can you you don't you don't get a response. You you don't the type of heat I throw, you can't even respond to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you just ain't got a response. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna beat what come out what comes out of my mouth. That was the end. I had a strap to her, right? That was the end. Speaking of past tense. So I said what I said to her, and she got upset. So weeks later, this is when this situation happened. So I go live with her. There was a childhood friend that grew up in our household when we were growing up that who lived with her as well. So as I mentioned, my plan was to work, save, and get my children back for my parents who weren't being on record with them. So when I first moved, when I first got there, I will never forget that freedom I felt. It was like my first time being outside of the community on my own, not around my parents or not around them people. You know, it was just like new, new territory, new environment, fresh, you know, new beginnings. Well, so I thought, so I felt free. I felt so free. I just wanted to get around and get out. So this particular childhood friend, he would take me out, you know. We were, we, we, I wasn't working, neither was he. And, you know, we both were broke, but we knew how to have fun, broke. Like, we both had a sense of humor. We would laugh and joke around together. And it was just fun. We would walk around the town. He would, he would show me around. And we would just have a good time cracking jokes on people and things. It was just fun. We had fun. So she got jealous of the fact that he and I was spending a lot of time together. And he was also helping me look for a job as well, find a job. So I was, I was going to a lot of interviews in the mornings. I would wake up and go to the interviews and things as such. And he would come along with me. And she was just jealous. She was very jealous. To the point where as I stayed I stay with her like three days. So I stayed with her three days. And I was, um, the third day. I came home, I got on my laptop, I had a laptop. I got on my laptop and I was minding my own business, talking to one of my Facebook friends. When, you know, she had company over some white woman, I felt the energy in the environment. Every time something about to pop, pop off, I feel it, you understand? So I felt that energy, that, that very intense vibration, you know, energy in the home. And I knew something was gonna happen, so. I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, stay in my own lane and, you know, talk to my friend and my friend up. So that's what I did. I was in there talking to my friend. Out of absolutely nowhere on Facebook, I was talking to someone on Facebook. Out of absolutely nowhere, she tells me, you're not going to um, come up here doing what the F you want. And I'm like, huh? I looked at her like, what are you talking about? Like, first of all, I know I've done nothing wrong. It's not like I was out there drinking and smoking and things. No, it was positivity. Positive fun of, of viewing my, my new environment, finding the work, you know what I'm saying? So for her to say that, I was like, what are you talking about? So I looked at her and I turned back around like, you know, I'm not about to pay attention to that. I put my headphones in my ear. No music was playing then. Then she tells me, Then she tells me, wait, I'm trying to see. I put my headphones back in my ear. I turned around, ignored her. I just looked at her, put my headphones in my ear, turned around, finished typing what I was doing. She said, you can get your shit and get the hell out. I'm like, what? Knowing I don't have anywhere else to go and how my brothers really didn't want them, won't meet at their house. I was told to get my things and get out. Then I was, I was, I was, that was crazy, but you know, I was me. But she expected me to leave crying and like she really tried to hurt me. And when I know you're trying to hurt me, I ain't gonna give you that energy.
trying to break me. So I got my things in at that at that time. I was listening to that particular time I was listening to the song by Lil Wayne, Drop the World. And I began to sing that song out loud. You know what I'm saying? Pick the world up and I'ma drop it on your in head. Oh. <laughs> Bro, I went out with the bank. What you mean? You gonna start? <laughs> I went out with the band. So when I'm listening to that song, I'm getting hyped and I'm packing my bag, you know what I'm saying? I'm singing with sh mm, you know what I'm saying? Singing with that mm. You know, and she just like, don't be cussing up in my house. And I'm like, what? Then she come to me. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 already already mentioned in my past, even now, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna put your hands on me and nothing happen. You know what I'm saying? You can say whatever you want. That's fine. Just don't lay your hands on me. So she comes to me, you know, come walking up to me, you know, push me. Shit, I punched her in the face. I punched her in the face. <laughs> I punched her in the face. I got a good one too. Yeah, her <laughs> boyfriend or whatever that guy is came and tried to, you know, break us up, X, Y, and Z. And I'm just like, you know, I was very, I was very disappointed. You know, I was very disappointed how she played that, you know, how she did that. It was dead ass for no fucking reason. This is the type of shit that I experienced throughout my life from people. For no fucking reason. So... There I was, I packed my things, I left, I was on the street. The childhood friend, he helped me. We walked right downstairs, sat on the bench, I had nowhere to go, I'm just like, now what? Well, that wasn't like what I was thinking, now what? No, nah, hell no. Nah. You know what I was thinking? You know what I was saying to him? I don't give a damn about that. I don't give a damn if I gotta sleep on a motherfucking street. As long as I get a job, I'm fine. I'm going to be fine. You hear me? I'm going to build myself up from where I am. And I'm going to reach the success that I desire. This ain't doing nothing but making me stronger. That's what I told him. And I had nowhere to go. That night. I had nowhere to go. Well, somewhat. I don't even know why I slept that night. Let me see, where did I sleep? First, we ended up going to one of his friend houses, right? This is very funny, too. Funny story. I cannot tell this story without laughing. So we went to one of his friend houses that same evening. He was trying to see if I could sleep at her house. I didn't feel comfortable there because I had OCD anyway. So we stayed there for a little while, you know, and he was telling me how his friend is a partitionist, some tapping partitionist, something like that. At the time, I did not understand that because, you know, the tapping was, I didn't understand it. You know, it's, it's, it's really spiritual, you know, it's a spiritual gift and things that's like, <coughs> spiritual technique, <clears throat> healing technique, I don't know. I still don't know, but then it was so funny. She was telling us how she's a doctor and, you know, she's learning how, you know, these tapping X, Y, and Z. And it's like the way she was talking was so spiritual. You know how you hear someone spiritual talking, like you hear me talking? And I know someone else find me funny. You understand? It's like, find the things that I'm saying funny. You understand? Because they don't understand it. And me... For myself, it was the same. For me and my friend, it was the same. It was so hilarious. I will never, ever forget. This woman was so serious about this. And we didn't understand, like, why she... What she mean? That happened. You know what I'm saying? She was saying that house. Look, I can't even put the words to that situation right there. But it was hilarious. I found her weird as fuck. I said, no way in hell I'm going to stay here. All right? 
I'm like, nah, I can't. So he and I left late that night. You know, we were walking around, had my bag. So you just walk around the city talking about how successful I'm going to be. How I'm going to make it out of that dungeon that I was placed in. I motivated myself that entire that entire freaking night. Like you ain't have nothing on me. <laughs> in my head, I was already successful. Then. So that evening later on, we ended up going to my uh, my brothers ended up accepting me into their home. Then I began the transfer. Um, you know, looking for a job. Like really, really, really serious. Like I went harder when it came to looking for jobs. So it's like I went from one part of town to the center um, area, the local areas where, where I was then, so I had a better opportunity to find jobs and things that such. So I went hard, you know, I went hard, 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 looking for a job. And then the book, Think and Grow Riches, came into play and it changed my life. I would listen to this audio version of this book every single day every single day you see i could have been out there smoking drinking partying having sex with every tom dick and harry but no i made a commitment with myself to get my life together and that's what i was doing that's what i began to do Thinking Grow Riches, that's when I was introduced to the, to the laws. When I was first introduced to the laws of manifestation, the laws of attraction, the laws of love. And um, sex magic and the, the power behind visualization and things as such. You know what I'm saying? That's when I began to really...